Hello everybody, welcome back to Code Shot with Profanis. Today we are diving into the after render effect hook in Angular. This hook combines the functionality of the after render hook and the effect. We will begin by examining how after render functions, then explore how the effect operates, and finally we will see how the after render effect brings them together. Without any further delay, let's get started. Like what we said into the intro, let's start with the after render to see how this works. Into the constructor, I will simply have here my after render, and I just want to have here no more like a console log. Let's go to the browser to see what we have. And here we have the after render two times. And please note that the after render triggers the callback function every time we have a new change detection. What will happen now if I have here a set timeout? of let's say 1000 milliseconds and without any callback. If we now go to the browser, we will see that we have one more after render here. And if we continue doing that, and this could be my 2000 and this will be my 3000, we expect the after render to run three more times. And yeah, this is it. But the after render not only run after every change detection, it also run when the application finishes the rendering which means that we can grab all the elements that we have into the our HTML template. So currently what I have here is just three different boxes, just three divs. And let's see what will happen if I have here these boxes. So after render, and I will have here just these boxes dot length. And I would expect here to have the correct length. And yeah, it seems that I have the correct length on every change detection. 3 here, 3 here, and 3 here. Nice. So the after render hook is great when we have to deal with the DOM. And by saying that, what I would like to highlight is that the after render accepts not only a callback function, but it accepts also different phases. So let's see how to use that. I will delete everything from here. And the phases that, that we can have is the early read, write, mixed read and write, and read. Let's start with the early read. So this will be my early read. And the only thing that I would like to have here is just a console log early read. And I will continue doing that for every different phase. Nice. So we have the early read, write, mixed read and write, and read. So let's now go to the browser to see what we have. And as you can see, we have multiple console logs here. And the reason is that we have different change detection cycles. Before we dive deeper into each phase, let's just have a short explanation of every phase. Well, the early read used to read DOM properties before any subsequent write operations. The write phase used to modify DOM properties. The mixed reader write used for operations that require both reading and writing to the DOM when separation into distinct phases is not feasible and the read is used to read DOM properties after write operations. After having this quick explanation, let's say that now the following, that the early read returns a value, can return a value, and that value will become the input of the next phase. So if here I will return now the return, let's say the value 1, I expect here the value 1. So I will have here just my value. And I will continue doing that by increasing the counter, which means that here I would just want to have number two and the value. I expect now the value to be the output of my previous phase. And here I will have value. And the same thing is happening here. I will return three and here I will have my value. Nice. So let me also comment this out to have less clutter console log. So what we can see here is that we have the early read without any value, then we have the write phase with the value 1, mixed read and write with the value 2, read with value 3. And this is how the sequence goes. So let's now comment this out and let's start examining how the effect works. I will have here just an effect. And the idea of the effect is that it will run a callback function whenever the dependent signal marked as dirty or has a new value. So here, if I have just the console log effect and go to the browser, we can see that we have just 
to the effect here. And if I now enable this one, the set timeout 1, 2, 3, and go to the browser, we can see that the effect ran only once and not on every change detection cycle. So let's now do the following. I would like here to have just a counter, and my counter will be just a signal with a default value of 0. And then into every set timeout, I will increase this counter. And also here, into the console log of the effect, I would like to console log that counter. So this just the value of that counter. So let's now go to the browser to see what we have. And as you can see here, we have the effect 0, 1, 2, and 3. Nice. So having this quick introduction of the effect and the after render, let's now dive deeper into the after render effect hook. I will comment this out and I will simply change this one from the after render to after render effect. And as you can see, the phases remain similar to the after render. And I also have here the set timeout 1, 2, 3. And what we would expect is to run the after render effect multiple times, similar to what happened with the after render, right? Let's examine that into the browser. What we have here is that we have the early read, and then we have the write, mixed it and write, and the function read with a function. So what happened there? Well, what is happening is that the after render effect behaves similarly to the after render, with the difference is that the input is a signal value. So what we have to do here is simply use this kind of parenthesis. So now we have the exact same thing, one, two, three. And please note that this run only once, despite that we have the set timeout running three times. However, since this is a combination of the after render and the effect, it will run when the DOM finishes rendering, and at the same time, whenever a dependent signal is marked as dirty. Which means that if I have here now my counter, so let me do that, counter equals this counter, and I will use that counter just here into the early read, and instead of returning the value 1, I will return the signal value. I will do the same thing here as well, into the mixed return write, and let's go to the browser to see what we have. And as you can see now, we have all of the phases to run three times. Early read, write, mixed read and write, and read. This is the first iteration. Then we have the second iteration, and finally we have the third one. And the reason is that now we have here a dependent signal, which is our counter. And that counter marked as dirty because we changed the value into our set timeout. What is very important to understand here is that the signal argument, this one, acts as a dependency. Similar to how the signal works, if the signal value is equal to the value of the previous execution, or to state it better, if they have the exact same value, then the phase won't run. This prevents unnecessary DOM operations and optimizes the performance. To see that in action, we will do the following. Into the right phase, I will have just a condition and I will be like, if the value equals to 1, then I would like to return the value 0. So let's now go to the browser to see what we have. And as you can see, we have 0, we have 1, only for early read and write. We would expect, since the next phase is the mixed read and write, we would expect here to have mixed read and write with the value 1. However, that phase didn't run, and the reason is that we return the exact same value as we had into the previous operation, which was this one. Which means that every phase has a hidden equality, and if the value is the exact same thing, simply it won't run. Up to this point, we have seen how the after render, how the effect, and how the after render effect works into, let's say, the theory part. And it would be nice now to see how the after render effect works in action. So let's now see how the after render effect works with a scrolling. This is a very simple example that I have prepared for the scrolling and see what we would like to achieve. Here I have one, two, three, four cards on every row. And if we scroll down, we can see that we have up to product 20. If I click this one, show hidden section, what we're doing is that we are displaying the hidden section and automatically we are scrolling to that element. 
So let's now go and see how the code works. This is my HTML where I'm iterating over a list of products and then I just have this kind of condition if hidden section is visible. And I'm changing the state of this signal by utilizing this method, show hidden section. So let's go to that method and see what we have. Similarly, I'm providing the value true to this signal value, which by default it has false. Nice. And then what I'm doing is that I have the hidden section where I'm using the view child and I know that using the view child this will return a signal to me. I have my hidden section and then into the after render, into the early read, I'm grabbing the offset top of that hidden section. And I'm using the early read because I'm going to have the offset top before any write operation. And then of course I'm returning that and I have here the scrolling position and since I'm now modifying something into the DOM, I'm using the right face and I have window scroll by a behavior smooth and I'm having here just the scrolling position. And this is how I have achieved to have this kind of functionality. So let's do that once more and if I click show hidden section, we'll have just auto scrolling. But I know someone might say, hey, couldn't we just use a regular effect or the after render effect without all of these separate phases? And you would be right. For this simple example, it's definitely possible, but honestly, it's a bit too straightforward to really show the performance boot you get from using those explicit phases. To truly understand the value of these phases, let's explore a layout thrashing example. And this will illustrate why separating read and write operations is so important. The short example that I have prepared for the layout thrashing is the following. What I expect to do is to change the width of every box whenever I reload the page. So if I reload the page, we can see that we have different width on every box. And if I do that again and again, we have different widths. So let's now go to the code to see what we have. I have this function where what I'm doing is that I'm grabbing the boxes. And for every box, what I'm doing is that I'm changing the width with a random value. After I'm operating a write to the DOM, immediately I'm reading the element. And I know that this is not the right approach. And the reason is that what is happening here is that I'm changing the DOM and immediately I'm reading a value from the DOM and the DOM is like, oh, you know what? I'm not sure what is this value because I didn't have the time yet to run a reflow. But since you're asking, I will force a reflow right away. And I'm doing that 100 times just to amplify the problem. So let's go again to the browser. And this time I would like to do the following. I will run a performance. So let's do that. And let's see what the result will be. As you can see here, if I zoom in a bit, we can see that we have all of these kind of red boxes. And if I zoom even more here, what we can see is that we have a forced reflow. And at the same time, we have this kind of red triangle, which says that something went really wrong. So let's now try to do the same thing, but this time using the after render effect hook by utilizing the phases. And since here we would like to write something and then to read something, we will just separate them. So let me comment this out. I will comment this out as well. And into my constructor, I will paste this code. So what I'm doing here is that I'm using like I said, the after render effect and into the right, what I'm doing is that I'm changing the width and please know that I'm doing that 100 times. And then into the read phase, what I'm doing is that again for 100 times, I'm reading the value of every element. So now if we go to the browser and do the same performance metric, we will see the difference. So let's do that. And now if I zoom in here, we already see that we do not have a forced reflow. And if I go to the console, of course, this is the value, the width of every box, which means that we have successfully read the value. But what is happening here is that by using distinct phases of the after render effect hook, Angular makes sure to give the appropriate time to the browser to finish any write operation before moving on to the read phase. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.